Hello and welcome. I'm Les Bubka and you're listening to Accidental Podcast or something like that. I hope you are well. If you are in the United Kingdom, I hope that you are coping okay with the lockdown. I'm going to start off with a bit of a shameless promotion on my part. If you would like to support this show, please check out my merchandise, where you can get unique t-shirts ranging from mental health, a hickey test poofs, to a Les Bubka Karate Jutsu one. I would like to bring your attention to my freshly published book, Thoughts on Karate. All of the goodies mentioned you can find at www.lesbubka.co.uk. In the description section of this podcast, you can find other ways that you can support this show. Finishing the promotion segment of this episode, let's move on to the subject of this podcast. Strong and caring. When I was establishing my club, I was looking for a meaningful motto. I looked around and could see that most people use the same quotes. Fall seven times and get up eight. Black belt is white belt who never gave up. Black belt is just the beginning, etc. You get the idea what people use on their dojo walls. Not that there is anything wrong with using them, but none of them really resonated with me. I was undecided what to use and was jumping between a few. Then I was writing my Axis Black Belt book and as per usual, it struck me at 1 a.m. in the morning. That is when I usually have my best ideas, but then immediately forgot, forgot them, having told myself that I will remember them in the morning. I think we all done that for once, a few times in life. I am glad that I took my phone and wrote it down. It must have been destiny in action as I usually leave my phone downstairs so I'm not distracted during the night. So I grabbed my phone and thought in the true spirit of Shuhari, I should look in the detail of what my karate represents and what message I want to share with my students and other people. And create my own motto. From there I came up with this motto which I'm very proud of. And it goes like this. Strong and caring people are the pillars of society and karate helps to cultivate them. I had so many people giving me positive feedback on this that I am overwhelmed by it. I thought that explaining what I meant by strong and caring can be a good subject for the podcast. And here we are. On subject of strength, I talk about the physical and mental aspect. I know how it's to be weak in both of those realms. As many of you who know me will have probably noticed that I am vertically challenged. If you haven't met me, I'm sure that Jamie Gray via Facebook or other uh, social media will have mentioned it to you. As I was always small, I was not particularly strong. Plus having an anxiety make me weak mentally. And when you are weak, you cannot function normally. When both body and mind are not able to stand up for challenges, you feel betrayed. And I mean both to the bullies and to the mental challenges of the daily life. In a way, that physical aspect of strength is easier to overcome, as you can start working out at home and see clear results. For me, it was going to the gym that started the process of strength development. And I have to say that I got strong. For my structure, I was able to lift a lot. For those who like stats and lift weights, here's my personal best. Bench press 105 kilograms at 55 kilograms body weight. That was when I was 19 years old, young and fit. Getting stronger physically improved my mental strength too. Having that trust in my body's capabilities made me more comfortable, at least in the gym environment. Then I found my karate and that was something else, different side of strength. Physically more challenging than weights, having to overcome fatigue and constantly pushing boundaries made improvements in both body and psych. Is that correct? Psych or psych? Mental side. Um, Then you start to realize with all that strength come courage, courage to hold your ground. You know that your body is there to support you and your mind is strong enough to hold that ground. 
you are no longer the pushover. Karate taught you that whatever comes, you can overcome it. If you are weak, there is no courage. As you fear for yourself, fear of the consequences, fear of the physical pain, all comes down on you. If you cannot take care of yourself, there is no room for taking care of others. It's just like with love. If you don't love yourself, you can't love fully others. In order to be able to be happy with the world, you need to be happy with yourself. If you want to take care of others, you need to be able to take care of yourself. Strength also takes over the fear. You can get involved in difficult conversations, support your ideas and be truthful to yourself without doubt. If you can stand up for yourself and hold your ground, then you are able to take difficult decisions and stand up for others. Not necessarily in a physical way, but also getting involved in difficult causes. I firmly believe that karate can help create those strengths in individuals, if the dojo has the right teacher and role models. In my dojo, students who walk through the doors immediately feel safe and welcome. They see strong people who care about each other. With that role modeling, the transfer carries on. New members start their journey into strength and care. I don't think that my dojo is special by any means. Most of the dojo I have visited have the same atmosphere. Of course there are exceptions, but mostly from the experience, martial arts, clubs are all very supportive. Our constant exposure to challenging training and supportive camaraderie I can't remember, I never can say that properly. I try again. Camaraderie is the key to marvelous confidence boost of martial arts. In my case, it's karate. I hope that explanation makes sense to you. I would love to know your take on this. What do you think about strong and caring? Also, what is your favorite motto? and what you're using in your dojo. Thank you for your time. I wish you have a great week.